Hi, hello! Last week Lisa Eldridge uh, released a new limited edition lipstick in the velvet formula. This is the shade Bloom. And I did a little like demo and comparison swatches with this lipstick and I mentioned during that demo that I had envisaged a look where um, this lipstick is sort of like the focal point of my face without really putting too much on my eyes. So I thought maybe we can make like a whole video out of it, just I will use as much Lisa Eldridge products as I can, even though either she doesn't have products in certain categories are, or I don't own the products that she has made in those categories, but like whatever I have within the Lisa Eldridge line we are just going to use today for this look and obviously the star of the show will be Bloom. And I'm just going to start doing my makeup and we will continue chatting as usual throughout the video. I'm going to grab my Inglot eyeshadow keeper. I posted a look already with Bloom wearing this exact same shirt. I was actually hoping to wear my new white dress today with the lipstick but unfortunately it is just a little too gloomy and cold today for me to wear that dress so I figured I can just wear this shirt again with a pair of trousers and um, funny story about this shirt the it, it's a present from my mom she bought it for me in Sofia and she gave it to me when I was visiting uh, there a few weeks ago and then I put it on for the first time and my husband's remarks he always has the absolute best remarks about my attire he said that I looked like grandma's tablecloth. I don't know if that was a thing wherever you are in the world, but at least in Eastern Europe, uh, grandmas often used to have like little tablecloths that would look actually a little bit like this. So overall, he's not wrong. I just think it's a really cute shirt and I don't really mind looking like grandma's tablecloth, to be honest with you. I'm going to take a little bit of Auric Glow Loss now to just slightly highlight and, and hydrate underneath my eyes. I'm sorry, there's a really annoying fly that is flying like right uh, around me here and it is killing my buzz. No pun intended. Sad husband is here to distract me. Anyway, what I was saying is that I was actually wearing this shirt with Bloom last week, so uh, it is not going to be a look that you have not seen before unless you have never been on my Instagram, in which case you will never have seen it before. Uh, but I did a look with, I think, Voristic Vixen and Passion Fleur, like my favorite combination of the taupe shades for the neutral look and today we're going to use the Lisa Eldridge uh, Vega palette and I'm also going to do something that I haven't done in about 150 years which is wing liner. so I'm just like mentally preparing myself for that. Now I still have my pill here with the Lisa Eldridge foundation samples. I've already used the two shades 4 and 5 which are, were, well they were these two and they were my uh, like best match and now I'm thinking that I think probably the shade light 6, so this one here, might be a good match for me because I am rather, well not rather, but a little bit more tan at the moment. So I'm just going to attempt using this shade. Oh, the only thing I really hate about these peels is that they can become quite messy. So I'm gonna focus on that for a few seconds to open the peel and then we're going to continue chatting. Speaking of Lisa Eldridge, and Instagram being buggy by the way. Oh, I wanted to mention something on that note because in case you have not really followed me or you haven't really caught it on Instagram, I uh, mentioned that about a month ago my feed stopped updating and for a while it was just stuck on sometime in the end of May or so. I think something towards the 20th of May and now finally it was fixed. Like, I want to say about a week ago, I just, you know, started seeing messages, well not messages, but like um, posts from, you know, the the uh, current times and not from a month ago. So just all of a sudden, on its own, my feed was fixed. I didn't really do anything. I had sent several like messages to Instagram to report the problem. Never heard anything back or hoped to, heard anything, to hear anything back. But finally, it just got fixed on its own. But then I also uh, was reading Lisa Eldridge's Instagram stories a few days ago and it turns out that she was also experiencing issues with Instagram. She couldn't like log into her account or something like that and Instagram were not responding. They were not being helpful. Finally it was fixed. But can you imagine like if they're not helpful to someone like Lisa Eldridge who has I, th I think I checked yesterday, it was 1.8 million followers. If they're not helping someone like that with uh, resolving Instagram is issues, they literally don't give one shit about us. So that's just very reassuring. In case your Instagram ever breaks down, that you can just either wait it out or abandon all hope. 
The shade match, by the way, I think is really good. I'm really happy with it. So the shade 6 works quite well as a summer foundation for me. I'm going to now take my Skin Correct Concealer from Dior. My favorite concealer as of recently. And I have, like I said, worn Bloom already on at least one or two occasions and I adore it. It's such a beautiful lipstick. If you're a lover of red lipstick, you're really going to enjoy this shade. I'm curious for those of you who were waiting for it to arrive last week. Did you already get it? Are you enjoying it as much as I am? I can't imagine that you are not. And if you're someone who is not really into wearing like bolder red lipsticks, like something like ribbon scares you, then I honestly think Bloom is perfect because it has so much more muted tones to it. Or at least in my book they're much more muted compared to some other red lipsticks that Lisa Aldrich makes. But that could just be, you know, me being used to seeing myself with a really like bright bold lip. Now everyone's measuring cup in that aspect is quite different. It really depends if you're used to seeing yourself in the mirror with a bright lipstick. I'm going to take the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder, I want to say. I can never remember the name of this powder and it's such a tongue twister for me that I always like stumble upon my words when I want to use it. Anyway, I'm going to just apply that a bit more heavily here where all my pores are because as you can see it blurs them really nicely. This is probably my um, most blurring powder that I currently own in my collection. The Dior Backstage is very nice but it's much more of a natural powder. You can't really expect it to do a lot of blurring. It does a little bit of blurring but not too much. This one is really heavy duty when it comes to the blurring. This is a really good powder from Charlotte Tilbury. I have very like select products from her but the products that I do own are actually of really exceptional quality. This powder included. Sometimes it can be a little bit too much if my skin is a little too dry. This powder can just make me look a little bit aged. But right now we are in some humid summery weather here in the Netherlands. And I think this powder works really well with this combination of weather conditions and with this foundation. I'm going to take the Too Faced uh, Laminating Brow Wax. I've heard rumors that Lisa Eldridge is releasing a, bar a bunch of new products, uh, but I'm curious what you guys have heard through the grapevine. So uh, I think she's coming out with a concealer that's been hinted already quite a few times. Then I saw someone somewhere, maybe on an Instagram post, mention that she's coming out with liquid lipsticks, which I found really surprising. But liquid lipsticks have been making a bit of a comeback, so unfortunately they might not be wrong. I'm saying unfortunately because if it's liquid lipsticks, I have absolutely no interest in owning liquid lipsticks ever again, uh, even if Lisa Eldridge is making them. So I kind of hope it's not liquid lipsticks, but just more velvets or better more loosens, although I've heard she's not really releasing more loosens this year. I'm sort of hoping she will have more of those beautiful eyeshadow palettes that she graced us with last year. I have Sorcery and Vega and I would really love to see her expand the range of palettes that she's offering currently and just to see in what direction she's going to take them. Speaking of eyeshadow palettes, let's talk about something that you guys have been asking me a lot in my comment section which is the new Isamaya palette. Um, I'm going to first choose a bronzer though. I'm planning on using Lisa's blush, so I'm also just going to take a cream bronzer. I'm going to take the Sunkissed Glow Bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade 2 Medium. The new Isamaya Industrial 2.0 palette. Um, a lot of you have been asking me whether I'm going to purchase this because um, uh, reviews on internet have been very um, positive about this palette and a lot of people say that the eyeshadows have basically the same impact as a Pat McGrath special shade. Now let me start off by saying that I currently have no immediate plans of purchasing the industrial 2.1 or 1.0 because uh, first and foremost I think that's really the biggest issue Nothing about Isamaya's brand really speaks to me. I don't think I am at all her target audience. Um, her branding, her marketing, the outer packaging of her products, none of it appeals to me. None of it is my aesthetic. And because I find outer packaging to be such a huge component, such a huge aspect of a product these days, 
I just don't want to spend so much money on something that I will not visually enjoy. So I don't for, for, so that's the first and like biggest reason that I don't plan on purchasing uh, either of those palettes from Isamaya. Second, when the first palette was released, and I don't know whether that's still the case because I haven't really researched it very extensively, but her makeup is actually pretty hard to get in Europe. Um, I don't know whether that has changed in the meantime, but that was for sure the case when the first industrial palette was released. Just a little uh, side note to let you know that now I'm going to use Dante's Dream, which is one of Lisa's now discontinued, hopefully to be um, placed in new packaging blushes. Mine is, as you can see, depotted because the original packaging exploded, which is the uh, main issues that people were having with the packaging on these blushes, that the, the formula was just too thick for the nozzle and the... Um, blushes were starting to explode from like the back of the tube which is exactly what happened to mine but i just put a little bit here on the back of my hand the formula has dried a little bit but not to the point where i can't use it it's still very creamy and honestly on the face it still performs as it used to so i will just continue using it for as long as i can obviously because it is still a beautiful blush it is a beautiful color a beautiful formula so let's all hope that maybe one of the new products that she will be releasing later this year are the blushes. I know that there were some holdups with the uh, re-release of these blushes because she mentioned it somewhere on Instagram that they were trying to re-release them in the spring of this year but unfortunately the things did not work out and it seems like they will not even be coming this year but I'm not completely sure, like don't take my word for it. Uh, I'm going to just put a little bit here through the bridge of my nose, I think especially now in the summer it's really nice to put a little bit of color there to give the impression of like a sunburned nose. Uh, what was I rambling before? Or maybe before I continue I will just tell you what I'm doing for highlighter. Uh, to stick with like the cream products on the face I'm going to take this uh, liquid highlighter from Daniel Sandler. I was saying that I'm not sure what the status of purchasing from uh, Isamaya these days is in terms of uh, European customers. Please, you know, do let me know if things have changed, but from what I recall, it was very, very hard to get Isamea products here because they are sold in the US or are they sold only on Selfridges? I know that she's sold on Selfridges for sure and we can't really shop from Selfridges anymore post Brexit. Like makeup products cannot be shipped anymore or it's not as easy to ship makeup products anymore so they sort of like discontinued shipping to us which is a shame. But yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, is it still very hard to get Isamea products here or has that changed in the meantime? And uh, the third reason, also an important one, I'm going to apply just a bit like this with my fingers and then blend it with the sponge. I think that was probably the better choice from the beginning. I I don't think the shades are baked, FYI, because some of you seem to be under the impression that because uh, people say that these are similar to Pat's special shades, these are also baked, but I don't think they are baked. I think they are probably a beautiful, impactful, you know, unique formula, but they are not in the baked texture and that's certainly not a quality that's important to everyone so i don't blame anyone who says that these are you know similar to past shades because if the effect of past shades is what counts to you then obviously you're not really going to care so much about the specific texture but some of us go on like a very deep level of nerdy and when we talk about past shades we don't just mean the fact that they give on the lids we also mean the texture Let's move into the eye look now. The eye look is going to be extremely simple. I'm going to use the Vega palette and I'm going to apply this shade basically all over my lid. Um, then I want to put this one in my inner corners, possibly just a few flakes on the lid for a little bit of like extra light on the lid. And then I'm going to apply the black shade as a winged liner. Uh, I think I'm just going to use it dry so that it creates a bit more like a smoky wing effect. But uh, if I'm not happy with that, I might actually drop a little bit of Ingl Inglot Dura line in there to make it more of a liquid and apply it more as a liquid liner. But I will see as I go. For starters, I'm just going to apply the dark brown shade. Maybe dark brown is a bit of an exaggeration. It's more like a mid-tone brown. Just start packing that like this on my lid and then I'm going to blend it through the crease. There is a lighter shade in the palette that I could theoretically use to blend the crease, but honestly, I don't really feel the need for that. I think if I clean off my little 
brush here I can just smoke out the mid-tone brown and use it as a transition and lid shade. So as you can see so far quite simple. So due to the above mentioned reasons I have no interest in purchasing anything from Isamaya as of now. If anything changes at any point in time trust me you will be the first ones to hear about it. But I'm curious whether any of you have picked it up and especially those of you that uh, live in Europe. I know that Claudia used to own, Claudia from B.O.B. Mindset, she used to own the Industrial One palette and she did recently a video of duping the Industrial Two with uh, eyeshadows from, I want to say from Pat, but I, was it exclusively from Pat? Maybe also a couple of like indie eyeshadows and maybe that's like also something that I should mention here. I'm not trying to be like a snob here when it comes to Pat's eyeshadows and like, oh, nothing is better than those eyeshadows. But I value her baked shades for the texture because I just find them to be so versatile and so flattering. If I was just looking for the same effect, trust me, plenty of uh, indie companies out there create eyeshadows that are equally stunning, if not more impactful than Pat's eyeshadows. So really, if you don't care at all about the specific texture and you just care about the glitter and the sparkle, then you can easily also look into a number of indie companies. You can check out Glam Shop. Glam Shop make really beautiful and impactful uh, eyeshadows here within Europe. So you don't have to order from like Cleona or any of those US based brands that are going to cost you your left kin kidney to import in the EU. There are also local options. Little Cosmetics, I think, uh, also make multi-chromes. I don't know what the quality of those is, but you know, Little is a solid company. I'm going to apply the tiniest bit of Pets Intensify sticks here in the inner corner. To apply the inner corner shade, you don't really need to have a sticky base to apply this shade. I am applying it because I touch my eyes a lot, especially my inner corners. So I want to uh, make sure that at least something stays there. I'm just applying that with a little pencil brush. This eyeshadow is just so beautiful and sparkly. And it becomes even more intense obviously because of the glitter glue base that we applied. Speaking of Pat, she has started to tease very heavily. And I think the mothership is coming. It's coming very soon. And it is going to be something with sun. She keeps putting the word sun in her posts. So I cannot for the life of me imagine that the palette isn't going to have some sort of like a reference to sun. Ideally it would be an extension to Midnight Sun because I think Midnight Sun is one of her most unique and interesting color stories. I'm just going to take this shade now like a few 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 flakes of that to apply on my lids like this. Midnight Sun has been my number one palette in the last year or two from her, so I would love to see an extension on that theme. But I would imagine a lot of you are also worried, thinking, oh no, Sun, that means more gold. Hopefully not pink, but oh gosh, more gold. I would rather take the gold over the pink, if I'm being honest, though. Uh, I'm quickly going to actually apply this shade also on my lower lashes before we proceed with the wing liner. You can tell I'm procrastinating the winged liner because I am genuinely worried that I don't know how to do winged liner anymore. I used to wing a liner literally every day. A couple of years ago I could not, like my looks seemed un incomplete to me and I couldn't imagine not putting a bit of a winged liner and I used to wear like liners with like different colors. I also have a couple of different colors here from Inglot that I haven't used in ages. But at one point I, f I just found out that I can sort of fake the effect with like putting a dark eyeshadow and smoking it out here in the outer corners. And I, c I don't know, I kind of got bored with wing liner and then I got a bit scared of it. And now it's been several years later and I haven't done anything so long that I don't even know if I can do it anymore. So hold your breath, say a prayer and then let's boldly venture into the world of wing liner. I'm going to take my wing liner brush here from Zoeva, which looks like this, and I'm going to go into the black shade. Oops. Oh, not all over my white shirt, please. I need to be a little bit more lighter handed so that I don't get crumbles of black all over my eyes. And I'm basically first going to sketch out 
especially the outer portion of the wing that's something that i always do back in the day i also used to use my used to do my eye makeup before everything else so if i made mistakes with my wing liner i could still fix them with a makeup remover wipe but nowadays i've switched up my routine so fixing the mistake would be almost impossible i'm just going to sketch out the wing first and then i'm going to go and apply the finer details i mean so far it's going okay but let's not get too cocky here i'm going to fill it out and just slightly fix the shape here so that i'm satisfied with it And I don't really take my uh, wing all the way to the inside because I think with the shape of my eyes it really works better if I do the wing here in the outer portion of the eye and I don't take it all the way in. And I'm also not going to do a very thick wing, I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I will flick away a few of the flecks of black that fell onto my cheeks. I think. Uh, overall, I am pretty satisfied with this wing. It seems like a winging aligner is a bit like riding a bike. Once you know how to do it, your neuronal networks and your hands sort of remember what to do. I'm just going to push as much as I can here into the lashes, close to the, close to the lashes actually. And then I'm going to stop before I fuck it up. I just applied a little bit of mascara and I thought we would also do the lipstick together so I'm first going to, as usual, apply a little bit of my MAC Prep and Prime before applying the lipstick. Now I'm going to take the matching lip liner from Lisa Eldridge in the shade Bloom. And here is a white shot of the completed look. This is probably like one of the most low-key eye looks that I have done ever in my life and also one of the lowest on sparkle key looks that I've ever done. So this is a special day you're not going to witness very often me wearing an almost completely like matte eyeshadow look. But I do really like how this turned out with the wing and I think this lipstick just really deserves to be the focal point of your face and I think a look like this is very classic. It's almost like a little bit of a pinup. You could even completely skip the dark brown eyeshadow and just like wing liner and put on this lipstick and it would look glorious like that. Anyway, do let me know what you think about this look. Uh, I'm very happy that I was able to show you the lipstick a little bit in a set of you know makeup and clothes that I was envisaging of originally when I saw the color and I hope that you enjoyed this video let me know your thoughts thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one bye